These are my top five games of the 2023 AFL season. Leave a comment below if you agree with my top five selection. Let's get to it. At number five, I have round 10 Richmond vs Essendon, which was dream time at the G. Mansell opened the scoring with a very nice goal in the first two minutes. The Tiger defenders were just giving away free kicks to Wiedemann for some reason, which would have been very frustrating for the Tigers fans to watch. After a back and forth quarter, it was the Tigers who had a five point lead at half time. The third quarter saw the Bombers use the corridor more, which led them to bring in the score back even, but the Tigers couldn't be stopped and the Tigers took a 12 point lead at the end of the third quarter. In the beginning of the fourth quarter, Dustin Martin kicks a very nice goal and the Tigers take a three point lead. With just five minutes left, the Bombers are down by two goals and a very unlucky bounce leads to the Bombers bringing it back to just one goal. And with just one minute left in the game, the Bombers kick it inside 50 and Stringett kicks it to the goal square and Durham has a mark right out in front. You couldn't get an easier spot from here and he kicks the goal and it puts the Bombers in front by one point and they end up winning the game. I thought this game was an excellent watch. The contested footy was awesome and it was great to see that the teams sort of switched scoring and the Tigers were up then the Bombers were up. So overall it was just a very good game of footy and I really enjoyed watching it. Number 4. The Crows vs Pies Round 7 at the Adelaide Oval. The Crows started off very nicely kicking the first three goals to Collingwood's none. It was a very sloppy affair in the start. It was wet weather footy but it looked like the Crows were very much in control of the game at the start. In the second quarter Nick Dacos was moved into the middle where he had immediate impact. It took the Pies 11 minutes in the second quarter to kick the first goal. As you can see by the score, the mistakes, turnovers and poor accuracy cost the Crows big time and at half time the lead was just 6 points. Overall this was a fantastic quarter, not for scoring but for hard physical footy. Both teams scored and the Crows had a 16 point lead. And then the fourth quarter happened. The Crows kicked the very first goal but it was almost all Collingwood kicking goals from there on. Somehow this was not paid a free kick to Murphy after Fogarty absolutely cleaned him up. This is an easy free, should have been a free, it wasn't. And then also later on Ash Johnson was not paid a free kick as well. If the Pies were to lose that game, those two points would have been massive talking points as why the Pies lost when both of those should have been free kicks and the Ash Johnson one would have definitely led to another Collingwood goal. Even John Noble, who was robbed of a AFL Grand Final medal in my opinion, kicked an extremely important goal here in the Round 7 game. And then in the last minute, the Pies get the ball in the middle, kick it into the forward line and side bottom kicks a point. The Crows kick it forward but Darcy Moore is there, he's able to take the mark and kill the game. Game over, Pies come from behind to win and that was an absolute thriller at the Adelaide Oval. I really enjoyed watching this game while Adelaide had many opportunities and their poor accuracy kicking goals in the wet arguably did cost them the game. There were several points there where Collingwood were known for that fourth quarter come from behind win and this was just yet another example of why Collingwood were the premiership team in 2023. Number 3 GWS vs Hawks in round 5 at Norwood Oval. In the inaugural gather round the GWS Giants played the Hawks at a sunny and warm Norwood Oval in Adelaide. I only got to watch this footage on TV but you can look, see and look it totally looks like just a state level game or even local footy which was awesome but the play was on steroids. The first quarter was neck and neck with teams level at quarter time. In the second quarter the Giants took a commanding lead up by three goals but the Hawks fought back tough and at half time the Giants were up by only eight points at the main break. The third quarter was absolutely back and forth between the two teams but the Hawks were closing the gap fast and actually did enough to put them in the lead by eight points at the three quarter time break. The Hawks struck the very first blow in the fourth quarter with a goal and they put themselves in front by 14 points. And then enter Toby Green. In the back and forth quarter with only 5 minutes to go the Hawks were up by just a single goal. 2 minutes to go and the Giants were down by 3. Toby kicks it to the forward line 
and Harry Himmelberg takes a contender for Mark of the Year. It was an absolutely beautiful mark. Loved watching the replay over and over. He slots the goal and puts GWS up by three points. 40 seconds left to play. Jarman Impey launches a bomb, kicks it from 50 metres, but it was touched. GWS touched the ball, stopped the Hawks from winning. What a game. You just have to love these games where they fight it out for so long and then it just happens to be the last 40 seconds, 2 minutes, whatever it is. That's what makes or breaks the game. They are so exciting to watch and such a thrilling finish. That's why that one is number 3. My second best game of the year was round 18, Melbourne Demons vs Brisbane Lions at the MCG. Melbourne started off really well, kicking the very first four goals in 10 minutes of playtime. And Petrarca started in the forward line. I don't know if that was an injury decision or what, but it turned out to pay dividends as he kicked quite a few goals on that day. The second quarter, the Lions started to use the corridor more and brought the game back within their grasp. The Lions were dominant that quarter and you could see the frustration on the Melbourne team. In the end, the Lions were actually in front at halftime after a very good second quarter, especially from Lockie Neal. The third quarter saw Brisbane take a commanding lead, leading by almost 30 points. In the fourth, we saw some individual brilliance from Cozzy Pickett who held the ball down enough so the two defenders would go past and he was able to go through and kick the goal which was extremely important for Melbourne at that point in time. And then Melksham comes in. He kicks a goal with less than five minutes in the game to make the Demons believe that they can actually win this game. And then later, Melksham comes back from the third row, takes the mark and then slots the goal to put Melbourne in front and the win. They were down by 30 points. This game was awesome to watch. Everyone loves a comeback from behind victory and Melbourne performed that in round 18. And my personal favourite game of the year was round 16, Port Adelaide versus the Bombers at the MCG. The first quarter, Port started off very nicely and then the Bombers kicked the last two in the quarter to be within a goal at the end of the first quarter. The second quarter went back and forth between the two teams in a very nicely contested game of footy and Port Adelaide were actually up at half time. The Bombers started the third quarter really well, taking the lead and then taking a very nice advantage of that before Butters equals it up at the end of the third and the rain started. It made it a little bit of sloppier footy but still some very highly contested footy and it was great to watch. This tackle by Zach Merritt was one of the best tackles of the season in my opinion and that sort of gave the Bombers a bit of the momentum but then Butters and Rosie were extremely important for Port Adelaide and they took the lead out to 17 points for the Port Adelaide power, almost said Magpies. Then the rain started to pour down and with only two minutes left it looked as if Jai Caldwell was going to kick the game winner and then there was just 20 seconds left, the Bombers defense have the ball, they clear the ball Enter Dan Houston. He marks the ball right on the 50 metre mark. And now remember for him to be able to kick this goal, he has to kick well over 60 metres to clear the man on the mark and the people on the goal line. And the ball is wet, it's heavy, it's after the siren. It comes down to a single kick. And for some unknown reason, Dan Houston, the man himself, has absolutely slotted the goal from behind 50 in the wet. This was an enormous kick. Well done to him and Port Adelaide. You can see the smile on Ken Hinckley's face. This was awesome to watch. What a way to win a game after the siren as a buzzer beater. Thanks for watching. What do you think of my top five? Let me know in the comments below.